Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Brett Hogeboom. Hey, today is Friday, May 10th, 2024, and we've been getting alerts for the last couple of days that we might see the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis tonight. Uh, the Northern Lights happen when the sun ejects a bunch of energy toward us and it interacts with our atmosphere and makes great big beautiful colors. It's way more technical than that, but that's the quickest way to explain it without you swiping past my boring monologue. You're not gonna see them like you do in Canada and uh, Lapland and Finland with looking up overhead at the Northern Lights from the North Pole and seeing them dancing in your eyes and they're amazing uh, in real time. Down here where we live, you're likely just gonna see some light, some pillars of light uh, that kind of look like uh, searchlights or smoke. And you're gonna see a little bit of color maybe if you've got really, really um, dark skies and no light pollution around. But what we do is we capture it with our cameras and you do that with a long exposure. So let's talk really quick about long exposures. Right now, the Northern Lights have a potential of coming down to our latitude on the, on the earth. North Idaho, that's where I'm talking to you from, Potlatch, Idaho. Uh, the Palouse region of Eastern Washington and North Idaho, that's where I live and, and do all my things. So the best way to find out if they're happening is to go to the NOAA, uh, National Oceanic and Aerospace Administration's website and find their Space Weather Prediction Center maps, Aurora maps. And they have a, a map that will show you right now activity and then predicted activity, kind of like a radar or a, a satellite map that you would look at weather with. It's similar to that. And it just shows the potential and uh, uses information from way more sciencey stuff than I know about to figure out what's it likely to do at this time, universal time, uh, at your location on the planet. So if you want to go see them, get outside of town. You know, uh, if where I'm at right now, uh, luckily our urban centers are pretty confined and we can move you know three or four miles left or right east or west and look north and have a pretty open area be really careful not to do it on private property uh, don't trespass on people's property to do this don't park in the middle of the road and get yourself injured or have your stuff trashed because there are um, hazards when you park alongside the road so find a safe place to do it get well off the road um, and out of the possibility of being hit by traffic and then see what you can do have a plan ahead of time because you, you don't want to miss the opportunity. Second thing you're going to need is a camera. You're going to need either um, a, a DSLR or mirrorless camera with a tripod, mount it on a tripod, point it to the north, get a nice wide view, and then let's use a couple settings that I recommend. You want a wide aperture if you can, um, as wide as your camera will go. The aperture is the F factor, F stop factor. And then you want to make sure that you have a reasonable ISO to capture the light coming in and the shutter open for a certain period of time. So I would say my go-to is typically F 2.8 if I'm not shooting anything in the foreground or F 6 if, I, if I'm trying to compose something with a cool tree or building in the foreground. Uh, the stars, leave streaks because our earth is rotating and moving. So when you're sitting on a tripod and you're shooting the sky and the stars, if you keep the shutter open longer than, you know, 20 or 30 seconds, your, your stars are going to be elongated because they're moving through the shot. So if you want the stars to be pinpoints, then you can do, um, you know, you need to do a shorter exposure, 15 to 20 seconds at the most, or you can do image stacking if you want. And that's a whole different world we're not even going to touch right now, but that's just the basics with a, a still digital camera, you know, set off the shutter or do a remote shutter or do a timer so that you're not touching it while it's exposing the shot. You don't want to shake it or move it and then wait and see what you get. Your phone, your, your smartphone is fully capable of, of getting it. Uh, I use, I mean, I've taken the time to invest in tools that I can do that with. You may have to improvise with a, a hardware store um, wood clamp to hold it, but Lots of people have these little clamps and things they can put on a tripod, um, hold it up, or a ladder. You can put it on a ladder, a step stool, or the hood of your car. Set it on the hood of your car and lean it up against something. Uh, but, you know, I have mine set up like this. Same thing with a phone. Go into your professional settings, um, get out of auto, and make sure that you have the, you know, camera stationary, compose a nice wide shot, do a 15 or 20 second exposure, uh, and uh, ISO 
you know, start start lower, maybe 800 or something like that in that neighborhood and see what you get. There's also automatic night sky settings you can do on phones. I don't know what, I, I, don't, I don't trust them because I don't think they're that good, but it is good enough for an interesting photo to share on social media. You're just not gonna print it out and put it in your office. Give it a shot, see what happens. Maybe you'll get lucky, maybe you'll get amazing shots. I wish you the best of luck. I really, really hope that you're able to see it and if you have questions, if I'm available and I'm not super busy, just send me a PM or something and I'll try to answer it as quickly as I can. And trust me, there are myriad other people in my circle that probably see this video and I can tell you things about it that I never even considered. So reach out to them too. I know Francisco uh, Aguilar is good. I know that uh, Tyler Horton, um, actually any of our administrators at Photography of the Palouse, um, our Facebook group, are all well versed in this and, and a whole lot of others I probably am just slipping the top of my mind with. Um, my friend Bob Marr is really good at it. He's, you know, annoying to be around, but he's a good photographer, so. And he has great glass that I like to borrow. That's the only reason I have anything to do with the guy. Uh, but otherwise, you know, try to avoid him. Did I say, I'm still recording? Crap. Anyway, hey, good luck. Go out there and get some Northern Light shots and make us all proud. Let's see what you get by tomorrow. It should be awesome. Catch you later.